Hey, welcome back to the channel. This here is an ECU for the Tahatsu MFS 20E, part of their EFI range. Now, I'm going to use this ECU to upgrade my 15 horsepower engine up to a 20 horsepower engine. It's in two stages fitting the ECU itself and then removing the existing restrictor plate. Stick around to see how we do that. Right, so here's the 15 with the uh, with the cowl off. This is uh, a two-stage process. The first thing we need to do is there's a restrictor here with the air box here. This is the intake for your air. There is uh, a restrictor inside here. So we need to take this unit uh, not fully off. I believe what you can do is un under this bolt here and here. Unlike the Suzuki, I think it's just got a single one down here. This one's a bit different on the Tahatsu. So what we need to do is to uh, under those two, two bolts and then rather than take the whole unit off, we'll try and just slide this back to, uh, to uncover the restrictor that's in here so we can get that removed. Now, as you can see, the stickiness here, I've just actually had this uh, engine returned to me. It's just been serviced. So I literally just got it back today. We'll get the ECM in there and then we'll put the 10 inch prop back on. So like I said, first job, we need to figure out how to loosen this off. Okay, so there's the first bolt. Second. And a third, just under there. There we go, that's free now. So we'll give her a wiggle. And there it is. Right, there's, an air, there's a tube coming off there, so I'll need to remember to connect that back again. There's the box unit. And there's the, uh, there's the seal along with the 15 horsepower restrictor. So I think on the Suzuki's, these are actually uh, one unit. So if you were to upgrade, say, a Suzuki 9.9 .9 to a 20 or 15 to a 20, I think you buy this whole unit. Whereas on the Tahatsu, they're actually separate parts. And this inner piece here should, should slot out. Yeah. So we'll save that for later. And then we're left with the seal then. And the seal should just slot back in. And from there, we'll slot this box back on, remembering to get this hose plugged in. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll get a bolt that back into place. So what we need to do now is flip her around and then we'll get the actual ECM installed. Okay, so that's the first part done anyway. Here's the ECM. Now I've heard that it's gonna be a little bit tricky. I know I'm blocking your view here, but this is awkward to say the least. Here it comes. Right, there's the rubber housing. That was a pain in the butt. You can see where you got those slots there, that's where it slots onto the, the bracket. I'll probably show you a photo of that afterwards once I've got this ECM removed. Right, now I can see the clip that I need to, to press in. So those three cables, or those several cables, connect to a small clip. And it's the clip that you can see just above those, just to the left hand side of those coloured cables that I need to pull out. There we go. So there's actually these two holes here where the, the socket itself clips up into it. So you need to push the ECM down so you get some wiggle room and then push something through each side there, just gently. There's the socket for the ECM. 
So let's plug that one back in. Plug the new one back in rather. Let's not plug the old one back in. That'd be embarrassing. Don't know if you heard that, but there's a solid click to tell you that it's fused back in. Right, so we're just working in reverse now. So we'll get this rubber housing back on. So you'll see I'm just slotting it on top there. Yeah, I can't really do this without getting my hand in the way of the camera, I'm afraid. But uh, I think you get the get the idea anyway. And slot it back into the the guides there. There we go. There she is, nice and snug. And then like I said, we've only got one bolt to put back in, which was one I removed precautionary, which I don't think we needed to in the end actually. Well as you can see, it's just started bucking it down. So this is a perfect time to uh, to get wet anyway. And uh, let's give her a start. You might wonder why I've got it on the, on the boat instead of just keeping it on the trolley jack. It's just that the boat is so much more stable, especially when you're having to give it a good pull to start it. So. That's why. Yeah, let's give it a go. Let's see if it runs. Well, that was it. That was changing uh, the ECM and removing the restrictor on a Tatsu 15, one of the EFI models. And that's replacing it with the uh, the ECM for the 20 horsepower of the uh, the same the same series of engine. So yeah, engine's running. Sounds good. And uh, I look forward to seeing how well that uh, that pushes the scout along next time I get out. So as always, if this video was uh, of any use to you or you enjoyed it, please hit me uh, a thumbs up and a subscribe and it gives me every reason to continue making more videos. Thanks again, see you soon.